Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a very cold morning in Angela's Crest uh, Forest. It was 36 degrees when we got here this morning. Um, thankfully, the sun's hit. It's warmed up a little bit. And uh, this is Anthony, who has brought out his very nice 2018 Mustang GT with Performance Pack Uno. One. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Cold. Cold? Yeah, no kidding. Uh, none of us came prepared for this. Um, so this is your 2018 Mustang. Very nice. The differences from the 2017 are pretty small. You know, it was like 0.2 inches longer. Um, it did get 25 more horsepower, 20 more foot-pounds of torque. Um, but yours is a stripper GT, but with the performance pack, right? Correct. Okay. So what what did that get us? Ooh, leg wow, legacy with a drilled bumper. That guy's hardcore. Uh, so what did that get you? Uh, it got us bigger brakes, uh, bigger radiator, and better tires. Okay, so it's it's very much the I'm gonna use this car for driving and track stuff. I don't need, you know, you don't have a nav screen, like you have a real basic um, center stack, but obviously you need a diff. You got 373s for a little bit better acceleration, bigger radiator to keep it cool. Really smart, smart mods. I think um, Musto, who built his 2011 Mustang to be like a square stance, slicked, you know. Is that the orange one? His is silver. Silver. Um, you know, modified by, uh, What's their names in Sonoma? They're gonna kill me. Uh, Cortex Racing. But he started with the same thing. He started with a really basic GT with just, just the hardware you need to make it work on the track because that's what's important. That's what's gonna break. So uh, I don't know, I'm really stoked on this. There's Because you're here and there's a Terminator here. Similar weights, similar power, similar price, strangely. And uh, so let's go see what this is like. Clutch spring originally is like 120, 135 pounds, and Steeda makes a 35 pound one. It is a lot lighter, isn't it? It makes it feel, you feel more of the clutch. It is bright now. So, for everyone watching, we're on a, the road here is a little bumpy, but we're only going to be here for about two minutes, and then we're going to get to the smoother road. Um, although in this car, you know, speaking to what they've done with Mustangs and modern cars in general, it's pretty quiet in here. We're driving over a very cracked patch of, uh, sorry, strip of asphalt, as you might be able to see. And yet in here, I don't think you hear it at all. Turn in's really nice. I've, I have really come to like how Mustangs drive as overall vehicles. And what I mean is, I like the steering feel, I like the speed, um, but I also, and I, mean, I like the look of them. I know they can be turned into performance vehicles of whatever level you want. Uh, the last Mustang GT I drove was a RTR car. Uh, that was at Grid Life in at Gingerman in Michigan. And RTR was out there obviously with Von Gittin and they had one of the RTR Mustangs there and they let me drive it. And it was a really, fun car you know it felt big compared to the m3 that we had uh as a press car the only thing i didn't like about it were the seats while wearing a helmet had me like this like canted forward and i think the seats in the 2017 were recaros and now the new car which we're sitting in obviously they are made by a different company i think i was reading uh jalopnik's review they're made by like lear or something like that uh i mean i find them to be very comfortable very supportive the bolstering's good strange vehicle it like simultaneously feels smaller than it is and bigger than it is and I know that everyone's like what the hell does that even mean and I'm wondering that myself but like I feel very comfortable driving this car uh, you know quickly like because it, it just feels like a bigger version of a car that is set up correctly like the chassis is real even you know the the lean is even it's not like nose heavy it doesn't feel uh, like front or rear biased and I think the steering the steering speed has a lot to do with it. We can change that too. What, oh, the steering difficulty. Um, what, turn it up a notch. Let's see. Let's compare. We're on normal. Now we're on sport. I think that's what I drove. So we drove a. Ooh, what year was that? Maybe 2016 for season three of Drive. We drove one from uh, Detroit to Watkins Glen and back. And I transported the car back to Detroit. 
and I found it was a really good GT car. I, like, we also had a Camaro 1LE we drove, or sorry, Z28. Obviously a great track car, but just living with each cabin for like five days, I really came to appreciate like how this cabin's laid out, how it looks. I think even this one, which is like a base model, they do a little bit of like bright work plastic and it, it makes the car look more expensive uh, than it is. And I think it's a really nice place to spend a lot of time. So that, that's what I mean. The Mustang, I think, is the better overall vehicle compared to a Camaro. Camaro chassis is definitely better. Like the steering is quicker. It just feels super sticky. I mean, if I was gonna have a race car or you know go try to kill a track, I would probably I would I would choose a Camaro SS. But if I was gonna buy a car, I think I would rather start with this canvas and then see what can be done suspension-wise with modifications to get it up to that level of how a Camaro SS feels. I think we're just Dyson. It's got nice front grip. What do you, you have pilot PS4s here? Yep. Right? With the, vel with the velvet on the side? Yes, yeah, it's pimping. It is pimping. So, so you have, this is an interesting build because you've got a bone stock GT. You went with like, hey, I, I, want, I want the GT barely, and then I want the performance pack and really good tires. Well done. That's that's what a lot of people should do and, and not get distracted by all the bells and whistles you can buy. A lot of people will just buy the base model with 355 gears and spend the money into their own mods. Ooh, wait. Tunnel. We'll do windows down on the way back for that. Because you have uh, Corsa exhaust? Yeah, Corsa Sport. So Corsa Sport. So you were saying there's a bunch of different levels and you're not sure how loud you want your car to be. Yeah, no, it's kind of in the mid-range and I feel like a lot of people go Corsa Sport if they do headers. I'm kind of changed my mind on that now because we're in California. So yep. I'd probably be looking for a Corsa Extreme. But uh, yeah, you know, we'll see. So it, it moves around a little in the front. When Whenever there's undulations in the road, that's when I start to feel that the front end could be a little tighter. You know, that's when it that's when it starts to feel like a heavy car on on really smooth tarmac or a gingerman, which is a racetrack, obviously. Um, you don't have to deal with those little imperfections like mid corner. And it soaks them up fine, but it does just tell you, all right, this is not as light as it as it seems on smoother tarmac. Um, it kind of wanders like a little bit. for it to set and then it, it sticks and goes. All right, we're gonna turn around because we've gone we've gone much farther than we do with the other cars because uh, it's a lot easier to drive. And impressive turning radius, not quite there, but than my last car. What what was your last car? That was a 96 Eagle Talon. Oh man, we've I mean you know well we didn't talk about that because we we're driving this car but <laughs> the fact what was that like in going to this? Uh, what, and you know, my last two summers were hot without air conditioning. I'm gonna let that car get a little ahead. And uh, yeah, I mean, going from that to this is like having a new car. I, I would, I really wish I just saved money back in the day and just waited for something that I liked. That's a, that's a, that's a, you know, it's a gamble. Like I, I think the grass is always greener in that respect. Like especially now, it's funny as cars get newer, more refined, everything. People go, you know what? I really want a vintage X, yeah. and I really want to have that connection and feel a mechanical thing. And maybe even you know, some people are, are gluttons for punishment and want to feel the breakdown and have to work on it. But then if that's your life, you're like, you know what? I wish I had air conditioning and gauges that worked. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so do you have the Talon with turbo, the 4G63? Yeah, 4G63 all-wheel drive. I had two. Okay. I had a front-wheel drive Eclipse at first, and then I wanted all-wheel drive, so I found a one-owner 96 Eagle Talon. And wow. I built it a little bit. I'm nothing crazy, but... Uh, I, they're great platforms. I've always wanted a Eclipse GSX. I think uh -huh. they're good-looking cars. Yeah. And the fact that they have all-wheel drive and turbo in a car that's like a shapely coupe. I mean, that's... It's getting more common now because everyone wants all-wheel drive for safety, but for, what, like a hundred years, if you wanted all-wheel drive, you were gonna get a sedan, a wagon, um, or like maybe a hatchback. Yeah. And that was like this cool, svelte two-door. And then it's like, oh yeah, by the way, all-wheel drive and wah, 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 launch. Yep, uh, that I kind of miss, but uh, not, not 
not having air conditioning and being comfortable. Yeah, being comfortable. Oh, let's go windows down. We're gonna catch this minivan. Oh, it's so good. Oh man. Windows I, down, it definitely makes it sound a lot better than it does with the windows up. Well, yeah, of course. and. Um, you know, when you do the drive-bys, like your car is not quiet. You're like, I'm not sure if it's if it's loud enough. I think the Mustangs are just like a volume knob. If you go bigger exhaust, it gets louder, but it doesn't really change the sound. The tone, yeah. Right, it doesn't change the tone. Mustang so like it's it's kind of like this car at 40 feet away sounds like probably the Corsa Extreme at five feet away. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, minivan. And it's just kind of like how 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 close or far do you want to sound, or how much do you want to know your neighbors? And because cars have such good insulation nowadays, you know, it, you might get in the car and go, man, my car's too quiet. And everyone outside is going, no, man, it's good. Oh, yeah. It's pretty good. Um, the a car I drove last week uh, was a BMW 340i with uh, a Kropovich exhaust. Um, it's catless, like a mid pipe. On the outside, it sounded awesome. It had pops, it had a growl to it, uh, it idled. Um, like really good. It was one of the best BMW sounds of an inline six I've ever heard. Inside the car, Quiet. nothing. It was like bone stock sound and I, I couldn't believe it. And it's just, that's how comfortable and quiet things have gotten because that's what people want. Oh, thank you, sir. Or ma'am, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, this is gonna be a long video because this thing is so easy to drive quickly. Uh, so what, we, we did get here pretty fast. Compared to the, the truck earlier, which uh, had 114 horsepower. These cars are so easy to drive quick. It's, I'm trying to figure out what it feels like. There's not much out, it's like, balance wise, it's like an FRS if you added 1500 pounds, but it's got way more power than that, obviously. Um, so that's kind of a weird comparison. It's like, yeah, it's like this, except it's different. So what are your, what are your plans with this car? Uh, you know, I want to pay it off first before I do anything too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you are you going into like finance? Because that's the most responsible answer I've heard. No, I'm not, but uh, you know, my my dad is a car guy, and he's like, don't touch anything until you pay it off because. Well, let, let's talk about what are your driving intentions? Like, you got a performance pack kind of base car. After driving my talent and being, oh, I want to beat everybody on the road, or you know. I'm not really into that type of stuff. You know, I just want to build good. a fun car. Okay. I want to have fun. That's and, a good idea. And when I stop having fun, you know, maybe that's the time to change some things up and, and try something new. Um, so just a, a fun haver. Fun haver is a great thing. That's BJ Baldwin's name for his uh, his awesome blazer. Um, you know, now it's kind of starting to feel slow on me, but you know, I get more comfortable with it, and then. Well, then you just got to start taking corners. Because uh, I, I think I think this is such a good platform. It's so reliable and robust. Like, you could take this to plenty of track days and just change out brake pads. Yep. Um, you know, it'll, it'll probably feel soft. Like, the problem is our brains can really easily get used to any kind of stimulation, you know. So you got this car and it probably felt kind of quick. And then soon, soon enough, you know, you floor it enough times and you're like, your brain goes, all right, this is normal for us. Like, what next? But... As we learned, in season like two of Tune, we filmed this guy who had a thousand horsepower GTR. And he's like, yeah, I think I'll probably get rid of it in a couple months. It's just not doing it for me anymore. I mean, this thing's doing zero to 60 in like two nine. You know, it's running like tens and a quarter. Like how fast do you need it? And the thing is, it unless you're getting to like a top fuel level, your, your brain will get used to that adrenaline. Yeah, and you're spending oodles of money to get there. It's... Exactly. So I think what I've tried to take away from all my driving is, you can do more stuff with the car than just add stuff to the car. So if straight line is no longer giving you like what you're looking for, you could do track days, you could do autocross, you could do drifting. Like there's a lot of ways to drive what you have that will probably, you know, light your adrenal glands up um, instead of just adding more parts and just going out on the highway to try to find it. Cause this, this platform, like, you know, must have turned his car into a monster on the track that was passing 911 turbos. Um, it was going after like, GTRs. I mean, granted, he had to put JRI shocks on it. We're going right past the guys right now. Uh, and slicks, but you, 
you, you know, this is a platform. He kept the drivetrain bone stock because he wanted to keep his warranty, and he did. Yep, yeah, that's what I, I don't want to blow my warranty. Don't blow your warranty. I think you can do so much with these cars with, uh, you know, suspension if you want, or just drive it as it is and use it as a, a tool. It's a great GT car. It's comfortable. It's got plenty of space. I think they're good looking. I think they do, they do a lot really well. They're a real good Swiss Army knife. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll just cut now because uh, we don't, people don't need to see us transit back. I think, you know, good purchase, man. Like you got, I mean, look, we got cruise control, you know, gauge display, like you have everything you need in this car. And if you want more luxury, you go for the luxury, the premium package you get cooled and heated seats, it's pretty nice. Yeah, you could, but you know, I, th I think for you, for me, like in my brain, I would I would personally skip the heat, cooled heat seats. They're really nice, like they're awesome to have. But for the money, I start going, how many track days could I do with that money? How many tires could I buy with that money? And like, it's not like you have a stripper car that has no AC. Mm -hmm. It's like you have all of the normal creature comforts and then you got the diff that'll, you know, is better for performance and more robust. You got a radiator to keep it cold on the track. Like, what else you need, you know? Just go drive the thing. Like, good job, man. Thanks for bringing it out. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you guys for watching, listening to the podcast, doing everything you do and supporting us. We really appreciate it. I really appreciate it as I go into these one takes and you guys um, blast me in the comments, no doubt, some of you. So thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.